Hey, it's Coach with Tactical Hive, and today I'm here at the Glock store, and I brought a few uh, old rigs that I, you know, had in the past. You know, kind of the the evolution of the battle belt, and in, initially, uh, we'll start with this one. This was a uh, a shipboarding battle belt. Got your cool suspenders. We would wear this under our dive rig when you're going to to the boat. Um, so this is what you would end up climbing with. Um, on this, you got the old, way old Safari Land pleather, whatever, you know. And then of course you would have this, uh, the shape doesn't have the, uh, doesn't have the attachment, but you'd always have your, your dummy cord on here, laying your that in case you drop your gun you'd be able to find it at the end of that cord. Um, and then you have an extra bungee here you throw over the top. It's lost a lot of its bounce, but uh, it's now, that would hold your gun in, and when you got up to where you needed to be, you'd pull that off and be ready to go. Back then we were getting issued a good old Glock knife. Just gotta have a knife on you at all times. And it's a decent knife at the time. We're talking uh, ooh, late 90s to in around 2000-ish. Um, place if you had a waterproof radio, you got a radio pouch you can put on there and have that set up. This is a waterproof gas mask bag, uh, but we'd use it for whatever you wanted to keep dry. And then you'd shove it in there, zip it up, and then suck it down so it would be neutrally buoyant. Little possible pouch here in the back. And of course at the time, we were using MP5s. So you get your cool three mags of MP5 and you'd have your, obviously one loaded, maybe two mags. And that's how we would do uh, shipboard assaulting. Uh, back in those days, we didn't have uh, body armor that was buoyant, or neutral anyway. It was all real heavy, you know, steel or uh, ceramic. Um, so we didn't use it. We just figured, ah, you know what the hell, gotta hang out sometime. Uh, and then, let's see, we did a gear thing a while back. Um, I talked about my rig that, uh, that I wore um, when we invaded Iraq. And this is the other piece of that. This is the battle belt that went with it. Um, back in those days, we're still figuring things out and I tended to go a little heavier. So I just got these good old Home Depot suspenders, modified them a little bit and put them on here. Got your good padded pistol belt. Whereas this one doesn't have any pads, of course, because, well, you're wearing rubber to get there, so it wasn't chafing you too much. Um, and you don't want things that soak up water because when you start from the water and you come out of the water, the less water you, that sticks to you, the better. So anyway, this one, we had set up, had my good old SIG 226. I'd have a light on it. I don't have a light on it now. And the old bale holster. Uh, and as we roll around to this side, this is a, a catch. And as my, uh, my job was either grenadier or breacher. So if I was a, being a grenadier, then this would uh, uh, secure my uh, 40 millimeter grenade launcher around here, around the side, okay, in case I needed to go throw a bomb at somebody. Um, and if I was a breacher, I had a short shotgun, about yay big, that would you know just stick in there. And this one doesn't have it anymore, but I used to put a, a magnet there that would help hold it in as well. And these good 40 pound rare earth magnets are pretty badass. As we move around the back, you always have your Possibles bag here, extra gear, whatever. And I always had a, a bag in here in case uh, you needed to pull something off of somebody and you know keep it contained for one individual. And there was some tags in here. So if you tag them, you say, oh, tag them and bag them. Well, there's the bag you keep it in. Rolling around, just carry these flex cuffs. You have them zip tied together, put that on somebody, zip them, and then they're uh, good to go. You keep them shoved in just in one of these little holes here. If you lost it, no big deal, but 
And then this pouch over here, put a couple of flash crashes in here. Um, and then in the main compartment, I would have either uh, 40 millimeter grenades or a bunch of shotguns for breaching. Okay, and that's what was all set up along with the, the, the kit that I was rolling with. Of course, there's uh, your mag pouches for your pistol. And like I said, this, this one had a nice pad on it because with all this gear, there's, the chafing's real. You know, you want to make sure that that padding, uh, you know, you can, you're not going to be uncomfortable or as, as, uh, as little discomfort as possible. You're always going to be uncomfortable to a certain degree. So moving on, this rig here is what I kind of left off with. And it's got the cool Safari Land ALS system, so I can take this one off, do a little magic. If I'm shooting the SIG with the light, I got that one. I'm gonna shoot a Glock 19 and just drop it right in there, and nothing else really changes. Um, again, this one has pads again because the, the friction is what's going to hold that on you okay uh, rolling them around the back you know small knife smaller your back just sticks out a little bit some guys would say oh yeah that's a knife you're going to give to the guy behind you but yeah never happened to me so i guess it's, it's okay right um, and then you get your first aid kit okay you also are going to have one um, under your plate carrier but this is your auxiliary so you've got more uh, usually has uh, tourniquets and you know stuff that you can get to and we're just talking you pull this tab and out it comes in one big uh, you know handful we roll around here always got to have your multi-tool so multi-tool on the belt I put this uh, this is a uh, uh, M4 magazine pouch um, again it's just there. I'm not going to carry more than two pistol mags. And there was enough room there. I was like, all right, if I need an extra mag, I can shove it in there. And it's a pretty quick reload. Um, and then I got my dump pouch up here. Well, okay, got the magazine pouches for your pistol up here in front. Got two of those. And then this is just a dump pouch. Uh, a lot of guys keep their dump pouch behind them. I like to have mine right here because uh, it's just an easy move you can drop your stuff in there you know where it is i'm not going to drop more than two in there and you know I'll repopulate my chest chest rig at some point so it, it, for me it worked better you know your mileage may vary um so that that's the kit there uh with this i always had the uh my uh, uh leg harness it's not really to do much to keep the gun down um it just keeps the crotch of your pants up where it's supposed to be so you know you can then bind when you're stepping over things. Um, and then this was a knife I was just kind of playing with to see how I liked it. Jerry's still out. Um, uh, and now the evolution has come along a long way. So whereas on these you needed some padding to keep that uh, the belt comfortable, now, uh, see this one's from s -Stack, but s and uh, Blue Force, there's a bunch of companies out there that, that make this type of kit. So this is gonna go around you, it's gonna go through your belt loops, and that's what's gonna hold your pants up, okay? And then this one here, the outer belt, has your hooks, or this has your loops, and it locks right in there. And you know, at first I was like, ah, oh, yeah, gimmick, well, not quite sure. But let me tell you, this thing is slick, it's comfortable, and you don't need, it's not relying on that friction, it's relying on the Velcro to hold that sucker in there. So, this one's from Estac, like I said. Uh, and these pouches, nice, thin, they got uh, flexible Kydex or plastic in here that, you know, will hold on to a variety of different size magazines. So, you know, if you're, you know, run Glock one day and a SIG the other, uh, another day like I do sometimes, uh, it beats having to change that stuff out. Um, and then this is their version of the uh, M4 magazine pouch. Again, really lightweight, really nice. Um, I haven't quite populated this one yet. I just got it. And so I'm doing my, uh, my gear shakeout to figure out where I want to go with that. 
But anyway, so this is kind of where the uh, the evolution is going. Uh, now we hang a lot more stuff on our uh, our body armor, the plate carrier, which makes sense because it's right here. Uh, and then you want to keep as much weight off of your hips as possible. You know, the reason I had these on here is this, as this got heavier, just the, the fatigue of your legs you know, increases. Whereas, uh, you know, more on your body, maybe a backpack and less on your belt is probably the way to go. All right, so if you're in the market for a new battle belt, kind of stay away from the old stuff here. I was just kind of bringing that for historical reference. You know, stick with the newer stuff. There's, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Do your own research. And again, your mile, mileage may vary, you know, the different situation that you're, you're building your kit for. Um, if you like this content, hey, like, subscribe, and hell, leave a comment for me.